today we are going to learn about oogenesis which is the female counterpart of spermatogenesis or the female type of gametogenesis but along with oogenesis which is a very important topic along with that we are going to also learn about ovarian cycle and uterine cycle okay so oogenesis uh, which is uh, basically the the female gametogenesis but along with that we will learn the ovarian cycle which includes a very important topic called ovarian follicles actually these two are very much intimate you cannot learn oogenesis without learning ovarian cycle you cannot learn ovarian cycle without learning oogenesis they are very much uh, interdependent or intimate but Uh, for an understanding we will first learn oogenesis and then we will go to uh, ovarian cycle and the, the third one which you need, need to learn uh, parallel to that is the menstrual cycle or the uterine cycle or the endometrial cycle so these are the three topics uh, of this uh, probably oogenesis is, is commonly asked uh, in your exams okay. so what is oogenesis oogenesis is the conversion of oogonia to mature oocytes okay at the outset itself you can see as contrasting difference of uh, oogenesis with spermatogenesis what was spermatogenesis spermatogenesis you know it was the conversion of spermatogonia to mature spermatozoan okay but here there is a big difference you have only till the mature oocytes so this is one very important point that you should not forget oogenesis only includes process of conversion of oogonia to mature oocytes now we're going to learn the step wise okay first we, we know that you have oogonium the oogonium are in turn developed from primordial germ cells okay i made a video of how primordial germ cells slowly migrate from the yolk sac they migrate through the dorsal mesentery into the primitive gonad that migration occurs in the early weeks of intrauterine life there it divides into oogonium the oogonium undergoes repeated cycles of mitosis and that will form what is called the primary oocyte this is similar to that of spermatogenesis you have a primary spermatocyte produced from a spermatogonium right okay uh, and but what happens to the primary oocyte primary oocyte will enter into meiosis one but as it enters into the meiosis 1 meiosis 1 contains prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase and within the prophase you have small stages you remember those names of those stages you have leptotene zygotene pachytene diplotene and diakinesis okay diakinesis and in this this arrests as the diplotene phase in the diplotene phase you have a meiotic arrest so i'll, I'll just erase this it undergoes an arrest in the prophase 1 and this arrest occurs at the diplotene phase and that arresting stage is known as dictyotene okay it is an older term but it has been asked in mcqs uh, entrance questions mcqs uh, this is called the first meiotic arrest and the big contrast of this from spermatogenesis is that this is occurring before birth so before birth itself all the oogonium will divide will undergo mitosis and will form primary oocytes so you will have primary oocytes formed before birth itself in spermatogenesis if you remember and view the spermatogenesis video where you know, know that the spermatogenesis begins after puberty so only at the time of puberty the spermatogonium will undergo mitosis to form the primary spermatocyte but here before birth itself you have a population of primary oocytes there are no oogonia remaining all the oogonia have divided into primary oocytes now what happens from this this remains in this dictyotene this diplotene arrest phase it remains there for years in the female and that will remain till puberty okay after attaining puberty this first meiotic arrest will be released that meiotic arrest releases and meiosis will continue and it enters into the secondary oocyte phase forming another progeny and this progeny is called the first polar body this is a big difference another big difference from spermatogenesis spermatogenesis one primary spermatocyte will undergo two secondary spermatocytes okay but in this case instead of dividing into two similar cells there is a clear division a partiality okay there is a clear partiality of the 
of the cytoplasmic content that is a point that you need to remember so the cytoplasm is mainly shunted into one cell but the cytoplasm the share that goes to this cell is very very less okay that is why it is called a polar body okay so the phenomenon that uh, occurs here is called asymmetric cytokinesis asymmetric cytokinesis so asymmetric cytokinesis occurs here and that uh, results in formation of one polar body and one uh, secondary oocyte which again rs at this time the rs is in meta phase 2 so this is the second meiotic rs so you have two meiotic rs and this are the two points that you need to clearly remember when you get a short note on oogenesis that there are two meiotic arrests the first meiotic arrest occurs in meiosis 1 the second meiotic arrest occurs in meiosis 2 okay this meiotic arrest will be released only if there is a fertilization okay so this is the product that will be ovulated and this can undergo fertilization it cannot undergo fertilization if fertilization occurs then this meiotic arrest will be released and meiosis continues to form a fertilized egg so this is a big difference there is no production of an actual ovum you only have a fertilized egg with the formation of the next polar body okay so the second polar body can be formed only if there is fertilization Okay, this is another big difference. One more point I want you to remember here is this arrest occurs due to the production of a peptide called oocyte maturation inhibitor and this is a product of the follicular cells that is surrounding. I told you oogenesis you cannot learn without uh, follicular genesis without learning the follicular cycle which will be considered in the next video. So the follicular cells that are surrounding the oocyte. So, so suppose this is the oocyte around that you have follicular cells. They do interplay you, they sort of interplay so the follicular cells provide this oocyte maturation inhibitor and that sort of arrest the oocyte in the diplotein phase to go further this is a very common mcq that can be asked now where does it uh, enter into secondary oocyte it goes into secondary oocyte only at the time of ovulation okay few hours before ovulation to be precise around 12 hours before ovulation first meiotic arrest will be released and the second meiotic arrest will be released only at the time of fertilization okay so you have two arrest the first meiotic arrest which occurs before birth it will be released only at the time of ovulation the second meiotic arrest which occurs at the time of ovulation the second meiotic arrest occurs at metaphase 2 which will be released only if fertilization occurs okay so altogether you have 2 million primary oocytes at the time of birth okay if you go a little more further around at the time of uh, five months of intrauterine life that is a time when you have the maximum number of primary oocytes and that will be around 7 million from there a lot of cells will undergo a degeneration and this degeneration is that process is called atresia atresia so you will have atretic cells the cells will undergo atresia and the numbers will reduce to 2 million at the time of birth and from there at the time of puberty in the adolescence only around 40,000 remains but from there it undergoes a, a constant cycle throughout the, each uh, menstrual cycle they will undergo a programmed uh, recruitment of a 15 to 20 follicles so 15 to 20 oocytes will be selected but from there uh, a majority around 18 to 19 cells will undergo programmed death again at tresia and only eventually you have only 400 to 500 that will be expelled at the uh, reproductive period that will be the number of uh, reproductive cycles that a, a normal healthy female will undergo so from 7 million from 5 month of intrauterine life you eventually have only 400 over that are released so let's learn the contrast okay uh, it spermatogenesis begins at the time of puberty oogenesis begins before birth why i am telling this begins because uh, the definition of spermatogenesis or oogenesis is from oogonia or spermatogonia so uh, the timing is different okay. now if you look at this picture this is uh, what i've shown the gametogenesis in animals it's a very general uh, picture and you can see how it was very simple in the males 
spermatogonium underwent growth and uh, mitosis okay it also undergoes mitosis to form the uh, primary spermatocyte primary spermatocytes forms meiosis 1 undergoes meiosis 1 to form secondary spermatocytes secondary spermatocyte undergoes meiosis 2 to form spermatids then it undergoes differentiation to form sperms okay there's a very straightforward division that occurs in spermatogenesis but what occurs in oogenesis you have oogonium oogonium divides into primary oocytes and this occurs this again mitosis this occurs before birth very big contrast and uh, then this meiotic arrest the first meiotic arrest it will remain in meiotic arrest from that point and this meiotic arrest will be released only at the time of ovulation only at the time of ovulation where you will have a polar body formed it's called first polar body there is a clear asymmetry asymmetry there is a very clear asymmetry most of the cytoplasm went into this cell less cytoplasm went into this cell so it forms a secondary oocyte secondary oocyte is the one that undergoes ovulation and this uh, will be proceeded only if there is fertilization and you only have the formation of a, a fertilized egg and a second polar body Okay. Now, one point interesting here is that second polar body will be formed only if fertilization occurs. Suppose it is an ovulation in which there is no fertilization. You only have a secondary oocyte with the first polar body. So, the stage will end till here. But if fertilization occurs, you have the formation of a second polar body. One point interesting is that the first polar body can undergo division in that case. So, you can have two or three three polar bodies okay I'll, I'll remove all the colors here you can have the first polar body remaining like that with the second polar body or you can have the first polar body dividing into two more okay so eventually you can have three polar bodies okay you can have three polar bodies or you can have also two polar bodies after fertilization occurs but if fertilization has not occurred you will always have only one polar body so an interesting phenomenon that can occur here now ooted and ovum is not found in humans in humans there is no formation of ooted or ovum there is only a fertilized oocyte and if we also uh, think about how much duration the spermatogenesis and the oogenesis uh, took a conversion of spermatogonium to a spermatozoan average uh, takes 72 to 74 days if we consider the oogenesis in humans we already know that uh, the starting of oogenesis began before birth but the uh, the, the completion the uh, release of the first meiotic arrest will occur only at the time of ovulation so if I consider this much as the oogenesis time period, it is actually in the order of years. If you consider the first ovulation in a female, uh, it will take from birth around the time of birth to the point where the uh, female underwent puberty. That means it will be around 12 to 40 years because that is a reproductive age time, right? So from this point, uh, from ogonium conversion to primary oocyte, from the uh, first meiotic arrest, uh, till the sec uh, first meiotic arrest is released, it can take up to 12 to 40 years. So you can see a big contrast. It, this is in the order of 70 days, but this is in the order of around 12 to 40 years. Okay. Now this can be complete only if we understand follicles, and follicles are also very important. Over in follicles, which will be we will consider in the next video. So thank you.